Hello, hello everyone, Jamie Trell here, your favorite financial literacy coach and profit strategist. And today I have a special guest. I love my special guest days. I love introducing new people to this audience. And this is something, somebody I've been wanting to have on here for a very long time. So I can't believe Brayden, this is your first time on the channel. Uh, so here we talk about financial literacy topics, but I also get a lot of contract questions. And I get a lot of questions about legal topics and things like that. And y'all know I always say, hashtag not a lawyer. I am not a lawyer. <laughs> However, <laughs> hashtag he is. <laughs> so, Braden, tell people a little about yourself. <gasps> Sure. Well, if we're speaking in hashtags, we also have to do like hashtag not legal advice and every other part in the disclaimer. 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 Yeah. Um, not your lawyer. <laughs> yes. Not your lawyer. So hello, everyone. My name is Braden Drake and I reside in the lovely San Diego, California. I'm originally from Indiana. I moved out to the West Coast for law school, did the whole bar exam. I am a licensed attorney. I also have a master's degree in tax law, which is why Jamie and I like to jointly nerd out on taxes. And then I also do all the legal stuff over here. So you've got the like, like you've got both sides. So you've got the tax and the legal, <laughs> like the boring. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the value proposition when I'm selling yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I love how you come at the same energy that I do, which is like, you're probably not who people expect to learn this kind of thing from. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we like to teach it in a little bit of a different way. Maybe give a little bit of a spin on um, topics that otherwise might be a little bit boring to some people and make them fun. So I'm glad to have you here, Brayden. Brayden's a friend of mine going, well, years, I guess now back, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, I just, uh, I went to a work retreat with my husband last weekend and I think they all thought I was going to have like a much more fun job than him. Cause they're like, you seem fun. And I was like, I'm a tax attorney. And they were very you just surprised. disappoint people, Brayden. Yeah, I know I do. <laughs> That's okay. Though. We get so excited that you disappoint us. I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about contract templates because this is something that I don't do. And I am honestly kind of not great at myself and need to be getting better at. Uh, but it is so important for small businesses to have, you know, contracts that are ironclad. And it's one of those things that we don't always think about until, you know, maybe something happens or maybe we realize like, oh, shoot, I don't have a contract or you know, my contract doesn't talk about that, right? Like that's usually when I start thinking about it is when something bad happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit, Brandon, let's talk about what, so people can kind of do an inventory for themselves of what they have, you know, what kind of contracts, what are like the must have contracts? If you are, let's say you're a service provider, I think that's the easiest one to kind of walk through. If you're a solo service provider, what should you make sure that you have? Yeah, I mean, the number one thing is your client service agreement. So whatever your signature offer is rights. So if you are a graphic designer, you need to have a design template for your clients. We call that a client service agreement. There's lots of other names for it. But that's the main contract you're going to have if you sell online programs, courses, group coaching programs, whatever the contract is that you are having your client sign. And then you're yeah. probably countersigning. That's the main, the main number one contract to think about. And what does that help protect you from? Like, what's the main purpose of having that? Everything, Jamie. It protects you from everything. So, so <laughs> the, the main thing, obviously, is that that contract is going to lay out all of the juicy stuff, right? How much they're going to pay you. And then what are you providing them? So that's the quid pro quo, right? In contract world, we call that consideration. So what's the consideration under this agreement? I pay $1,000, Jamie gives me XYZ consulting services, that is our binding contract, and then everything below that, when are you paying? What's your method of payment? What happens if you don't pay on time? We also cover, I tell people, think about, think about your junior high writing class, who, what, when, where, and sometimes why, but we don't typically have to address the why in a contract. Yeah. That makes sense. I do think that that is usually when we start to look at our contracts is if something starts to go wrong and we want to see like, you know, okay, I signed a contract. What does it say about this? Or how do I get out of a contract or something like that? So um, that's usually when I'm looking more through my terms. And that's usually what I'm adding to them when I realize that something has been uh -huh. left out, right? <laughs> Client's not paying you on time. All right, we got to fix this for next time. Client wants to get yep. out of the contract. Especially you think about, and, and it depends, right? You, like, I know that you have a pretty like a pretty broad audience. So what you put in the contract is, is going to depend. I work with a lot of wedding professionals. So with wedding planners, they're providing ongoing services like 
usually over a year long period of time. Mm -hmm. So I always want to make sure that they're being compensated in equal uh, kind of time periods to the work mm -hmm. that they're doing. Yeah. So don't mm -hmm. wait until a month before the wedding to collect the money if you've already done 90% of the work. On the other hand, if you're just offering like a VIP day or an intensive consultation, or you're doing like a one day event where they're going to pay you three weeks before, your payment terms can be a lot simpler. So at the end of the day, all this kind of contract language needs to be specifically thought of uh, in consideration of the type of service you provide and what all that looks like. Yeah, absolutely. And thinking about like the what could go wrong, I think bookkeepers also fall into that category, right? Of people who oftentimes wait wait too long or tax preparers. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they haven't, you know, they've done all the work and then they're trying to collect on these things. So those are things yeah. you want to think about in your payment terms and in your contracts. So then, okay, so that's a customer service agreement. What's the next contract? What's another contract that people need to make sure that they have in place? Well, if you have a website, you need a privacy policy. Um, nowadays, I don't get super into like GDPR and all these privacy laws. It's not, like not really my gig. But I know that generally, if you're collecting any information, you need a privacy policy. And for most of us, that's emails. But I'm pretty sure that like cookies even apply. Don't ask me how cookies work. But if you got cookies going on, which I think we all do, you probably probably need a privacy policy. Uh, if you're working with independent contractors or subcontracting work, you need a contract for that. We call that a contractor agreement. And then we have all the other contracts. Uh, if you need to uh, like license work, I think you've done that before, Jamie. Uh, mm -hmm. If you ever have to cancel, yeah, if you ever need to cancel a contract, that's important. So there's lots of um, kind of subcontracts we can use as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so talking about a contractor um, contract, a contractor contract, um, <laughs> do you yeah. normally recommend, because I know typically oftentimes when I hire a contractor, they have a contract. Should uh -huh. I have a contract too when I'm hiring them or should I, should we, you know, be going back and forth? How does that normally work? Yeah. Usually you only have one, want to have one. Um, and it, it kind of depends. So I like to think of a client service agreement is going to outline like my services. It's my process. I'm giving you that contract. So if you're going to hire me on like a project basis, I'm going to give you that kind of agreement. If you're hiring someone that's working in your business, like an ongoing basis as part of your team, first of all, be careful because legally they might need to be an employee. But if they're okay to be a contractor, then they're going to sign a contractor agreement. It's a little bit different than a client service agreement. Now, in an ideal world, um, the contractor will provide you one if they already have a business. But if they don't have one, if you're hiring, you know, like your cousin to do your social media, they might not have a contract. You definitely want to give them one. Now, one thing to consider is, of course, there's going to be terms that they might not want to have that you may want to have. So... There might be some terms that are left out depending on who's initially providing the original contract. So you just need to look out for that. Like, for example, work for hire is a big one. If you're going to hire a contractor, you want to make sure that's in there. It's not something that they maybe are including if they're giving you the document. Right. So I would imagine that typically whoever is doing the document, it's going to be probably written originally a little bit more favorable to them. Correct. And then it's good to read your contracts, y'all. So this is important. Yeah. <laughs> I was able to agree, Braden, read your contracts. I know it sounds like legalese, but especially when you're talking about those payment terms or refund terms or anything like that, you got to know what's in there because um, I tend to go into things optimistically and I had a run in. I mean, I had multiple contractors in a row that did not do what they were supposed to do. And the first one I didn't have a contract with, the second one I didn't have a strong enough contract with. And so I ended up being out money. So again, it was kind of one of those learn the hard ways. Uh, and so now I'm like trying to shout from the rooftops to make sure people do <laughs> have contracts and pay attention to them. Yeah, and a lot of it's negotiable too, right? So for example, if I, I have five contractors that work with me on an ongoing basis now, um, we've now worked out, I pay all my contractors on the 15th of the month. I do this for mm -hmm. cash flow purposes, which you can talk a lot more about, but also for ADHD purposes. So I don't forget, it all happens <laughs> once a month. So if they're sending me a contract, I'm gonna ask them, oh, your contract yeah. specifies payment every other week. Can we change that? Generally, yeah. they're fine with it. They're not fine with it. It's not a deal breaker. But that's one thing in addition to intellectual property rights. Like those are the two big things I'm typically looking at if I'm going to hire someone on an ongoing basis. If I'm hiring like my brand photographer, um, I'm actually doing a brand shoot in Palm Springs in three weeks. That contract's a lot more. 
<laughs> yeah, that was like a lot more take it or leave it. Um, I actually wrote her co wrote her contract, so I knew what was in it. Um, but that one's gonna be it's gonna look a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So they're all going to look a little bit different, but it is important to kind of customize it to you and they can change. I think that's important too, is that some people think they get a contract from someone and that's just, they just need to sign it because that's how these e-signature things tend to work, you know, but yeah. you should, you can and should provide feedback if you have it. So um, even if you can just pretend like you're sending it to your lawyer <laughs> and to say your lawyer has comments back, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and when it comes to, this is a good point because Especially, I don't know why, but the wedding folks I work with get very irate when their clients want to edit their contracts. And yeah. I'm always the one jumping in being like, it's not that big of a deal, depending on what they want to edit, right? Yeah. So some stuff's pretty minor. Uh, for example, my photographer has a clause that you can only have two outfit changes like in your photo shoot. And the reason why they do that is because they don't want you going and complaining to them when you've wasted a half an hour of your two hour shoot changing clothes. Yeah. Um, I always ask my photographer to strike it because I literally come with five shirts and I just like change them in front of yeah. her like while she's adjusting a, a lens. That's not a huge deal. So think about What's the actual practical effect of this particular clause being changed? Right. What's the purpose that it's there? I love that. So, so we've got those contracts in order, hopefully. Hopefully everybody has them. And if they don't, I want to talk a little bit about what you have, Brayden, that I think is so neat that you're offering up to people. So tell them a little bit about the contract vault. <laughs> Sure. So the contract vault, it's really, I mean, the name kind of says it all. It's a vault. It's a bank. It's a hub where you can log in and get all your contract templates. Now, I'm not going to promise that this covers every industry. That would be next to impossible. So it does kind of stay within my wheelhouse. It is ideal if you're a creative service provider or an online educator. So photographers, designers, uh, general coaches. So if you're a life coach, a business coach, any kind of consultant, consulting services, uh, or if you do online courses, memberships, speaking, uh, any of those kind of people, it's going to cover you with your client service agreements, contractor agreements, cancellation agreements, postponements. I even have an LLC operating agreement in there, which is the most exciting. People get, I'm being sarcastic. Woo yeah <laughs> Woo -hoo! uh meeting minutes even we have meeting minutes in there Ooh, uh, and more that's sexy <laughs> yeah real sexy i know, I know. Uh, that's awesome so so your contract vault comes with all of this stuff for you know people that this is a good fit for right so yeah. why okay here's here's the thing because i how much do you firstly say how much you charge for it and then i'm going <laughs> to tell everybody that it's it's way less than I told Brayden to charge for it. Yeah, I probably should have led with that. So the contract vault is $30. Um, since we're all B2B people here, I'll, I'll yeah. just tell everyone, it's basically like a paid email list builder for me. As, mm -hmm. uh, I, have, I was just sharing this on a podcast earlier today. I've sold more of the contract vault this year than I've given away freebies on my website. So it's generated yeah. more emails for me than any of like my free offers I've ever put out. And that's why yeah. it's so inexpensive. Yes, yes. And I'm I'm a big fan of that. Although I still, I'm glad you're charging for it because that would have been absolutely insane if you were giving it away. But also, I I very hard, hard lobbied uh, Brayden to make it more expensive and I got uh -huh. denied. So. <laughs> it's okay. You, you, so I think you were right on that one. And yeah, you, you, you weren't alone. Yeah, yes, yes. We Many of us did. But that's okay because that means that the listeners can get it for a cheaper price. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So if you guys are interested in the contract vault or to go check out what all is in it, you can go to jamietrollcom forward slash contract vault. Uh, it is currently $30. I always like to say, because this is YouTube and people will come back to me two years from now and yeah. say, Jamie, this isn't here anymore. Or Jamie, this is not $30 anymore. And I, there are no guarantees, right? Right, Braden? There are no guarantees that this will last forever into time. So if you need it, this is probably the time to get it. <laughs> but you can go check out the link if you're watching this later to see what the current price is, right? Yeah, I'm, I've actually chatted with some of my business friends about whether I should bump it up to $50 at the end of the year. I don't think I'm going to, but I do reserve the right. So Always reserve okay. the right, right? The legal <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. Terms can change at any time, um, but mm -hmm. you guys should check it out because it's awesome. And I love the fact that it's not just contract templates. You have tons of templates, 
but they're really customizable. I was kind of, you know, looking around in there and I can see how you can customize it to where it's, you know, fits your specific situation. You have lots of additional riders in there that are more specific, like industry specific terms for certain industries. Uh, and I really, really like how, you know, easy it is to kind of plug and play, which is kind of my jam. I love plug and play. So yeah. and you have training videos in there to help people too, in case they're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I call it build a bear, but with contracts. So I can't obviously make that like part of the main tagline trademark. But if you've ever been, you know, you assemble it as you go. And um, like I say, I can't promise every industry. But like a little while ago, I had a group of caterers that came to me. And they all were like, we can't find good templates anywhere. So I created uh, separate clauses just for them. And it really just all comes down to, are there going to be enough people interested in this? And if so, I'll do it now. I'm not planning on going into like, I don't know, like airplane manufacturing or anything super outlandish. Go get a corporate attorney for that. But if someone is thinking about the contract vault and they're, they have a question of whether it would uh, fit based on what they do, they can message me as well. Awesome. That's awesome. So yes, I would absolutely go run and grab uh, Braden's contract vault. I think it is fantastic. I think it's super helpful to so many business owners that need it. And you don't have to charge a, you know, you don't have to get charged by a lawyer, like however much money it would cost to sit down with a lawyer and do all these contracts, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which, you know, is great. Again, if you have a more complicated business, that's probably the way you want to go. But if you have a simpler business or one of these businesses that Braden's talked about, he's already got it ready for you to, you know, get the ball rolling. So um, I definitely go check that out, jamietrell.com forward slash contract vault. And Brayden, I'm so excited to have you here today. You can come yeah, back. thanks for having me. I need to have Sorry? you come back and talk more law, law. So let people let me know down below what Brayden should come back and talk about <laughs> on this channel. He's got all the legal and the tax and all the things. Um, so I'm sure we'll have you back, Brayden. But in the meantime, y'all go check out, get those contracts, get them going. Protect yourself. <laughs> Bye for now.